We have to recognize that in each other is a unique piece to God's great puzzle. Mm -hmm. And our uniqueness and difference doesn't mean anybody's better. Right. It just means we're equipped so that as a team mm -hmm. we can make it mm -hmm. to the promised land. Yeah, Amen. Amen. But we will never see it if we still think that we're something. Mm -hmm. When Paul reminds us in Galatians 6 that we're nothing. Mm -hmm. If we still have partiality in us, we're gambling with the promise. The second point. We have to consider the broader implications of our communication. Mm -hmm. And we'll turn to the text. Verse 35 says, And the people stood beholding that's all it says. And the people stood beholding, watching. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. It's very interesting. The people stood watching. We said this so many times. In many sermons, Brother Terry has said it, Brother Marcus has said it, Brother David has said it, Brother Joseph has said it. I've said it. Proverbs 29. For ruler hearken to lies. Then all the servants are wicked. But see, here's the thing. David touched on it in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, and I'm so glad he did. The three temptations that Satan offered to Jesus began with, if thou be the Son of God. That's exactly what the rulers say. Mm -hmm. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. If thou be the Son of God, save yourself. Mm -hmm. You say thou. Mm -hmm. Do it, Jesus. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's not just the fact that there's speech mirrored the satanic. It's the fact that even though Jesus had told them several times what was in their hearts, oh, no. they said, you're a utopian dreamer from a, from a Galilean backwater. You can't tell us anything. See, evil speaking is a part. But let's go deeper and consider what's in our hearts. Mm. Because evil speech is a product, as Matthew reminds us in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, is a product of what's in here. See, we shouldn't ever grow comfortable just with being able to quote scripture or being able to recite the points from any sermon or being able to put together a carefully crafted sermon. We should rather be focused on living a proper sermon. See, we need to broaden how we view communication. It's not just what we say. But we have to recognize that people are watching what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're watching us when we don't even think they are. Mm -hmm. So we need to consider the broader implications of our communication. Thank you. At all times. All times. At all times. Thirdly and finally, and we'll skip down <clears throat> to verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost, thou, dost not thou, excuse me, fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing of it. Thirdly and finally, after we abandon all vestiges of partiality, after we consider the broader implications of our communication, we have to be more willing to see ourselves hmm. than other people. We have to be more willing to remove the beam in our own eye mm -hmm. than to even comment on the moon in our brother or sister's eye. And that's the powerful example we have here. The, the other malefactor, in the midst of the people berating him, in the midst of the people deriding him, in the midst of the pain of the crucifixion. I want, 
I want everybody to re recognize how painful crucifixion was. Mm. Oftentimes, they drive the nails through your ankle bones. They wouldn't nail your hands. They drive the nails through your wrists. And in driving the nails through the wrists, they break one of the most important nerves in your body, mm. which would subject the person to pain the likes of which you couldn't even imagine. Then, after being put on the cross, which often resulted in the dislocation of one's shoulder, each breath became laborious, painful, a battle between asphyxia and staying alive. Mm. And I want you to recognize that in the midst of this pain, the malefactor had the wherewithal to silence the other criminal and say, Shut up, man! Don't you recognize who is in the midst? Don't dare deride him. Mm. We're here because of what we did. Mm. We did it. Mm. And we received the just punishment for our crime. Mm. Mm. That's what we have to do. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if we don't, we're gambling with the promise. Mm. And the mantle that Christ mm -hmm. leaves us will be forever rent. Mm. Mm. It's very powerful. No matter what we go through, no matter what we see, no matter what people say about us, no matter what this life looks like, as long as God is showing us ourselves, mm -hmm. though we be hanging on a cross, though we be in pain the likes of which we couldn't imagine, though we don't see how we're going to get out we have to recognize that in the midst of that sacrifice, in the midst of that pain, though it seems like we're losing, just like it was with Christ, in that losing, God was winning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this exaltation mm -hmm. on the cross on Calvary, While it also mirrors the suffering we have to go through, mm -hmm. it also mirrors the glorious exaltation mm -hmm. that is ours if we but make up our minds to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Because, as David read in Luke 14, Jesus, in verse 43, after the malefactor, asked the Lord to remember him. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, Shalt thou be with me in paradise? This day, this new day, this day, this new day of a brand new generation, a brand new year, this day which inaugurated the acceptable year of the Lord. This day that is still our day, as Paul reminds us, because we who were dead in sins have been quickened by Jesus and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Uh -huh. That's true right now. It's more now. And as Christians who are hungry and thirsty to emulate Christ, to recognize, of God's design, we have to recognize that the acceptable year of the Lord huh. is not some time beyond history. Come on now. But the acceptable year of the Lord is any year uh -huh. when Christians with a made-up mind uh -huh. decide to follow Christ. Uh -huh. The acceptable year of the Lord is any year uh -huh. when we have the gumption uh -huh. to stare Satan in the face and declare, I know in whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard everything that I have entrusted to him against that day. Come on the acceptable year of the Lord is any year when we can boldly declare that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The acceptable year of the Lord is any year when we can declare that I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor powers, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
the acceptable year of the Lord.